Dearest Cynthia, I'm so sorry I seemed upset when you left. The truth is that these are uncertain times. Knowing that I can't protect you anymore leaves me numb. But know that I am so very proud of you. Stand strong on the battlefield and don't lose the kindness that's in your heart. I'm sending you this set of Tellstones. Remember what it was like when we played when you were young? I hope it brings you and your comrades some joy and laughter in the days ahead. When you play this, think of home. I love you. Come back to us safely. Pa. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Tellstone's King's Gambit by Riot Tabletop and Riot Games, the makers of games like Mechs and Minions, the popular tabletop game, and League of Legends, the popular mobile MOBA video game. In the game Tellstones, you're basically going to be playing with pucks or circular discs, and you'll be using your memory. And you're basically going to be placing these pucks on a board. You'll be flipping them over and trying to remember their positioning, and of course, trying to make your opponent forget their positioning. You'll be switching their places, you'll be flipping them over and flipping them back, you'll be peeking at them, and you'll be challenging and boasting as well. Try and score up to three points or challenge your opponent to a boast and if they cannot get it right or if you get it right you will win the game instantly it's a game of memory a little bit of I guess luck as well as a little bit of lying or deception let's go ahead and show you down below what the game looks like what it comes with how it plays and then I'll tell you what I think about it Welcome to the battlefield, champion, and here is the game Tellstone's King's Gambit, and everything included. The first thing, as you'll note, the note that is to Cynthia from her father. It's what comes in the game, and it's just a nice little folded piece of paper that gives you a story of the game. Go ahead and set that aside to see that this is the case for Tellstones. And as you can see, all of the discs will be placed in here. These discs are rather thick and very well made, very high quality. And you're going to have the spacing for each of the discs as well as the point trackers. You'll be placing them in here. The case is also going to basically have a little compartment that will close just like that and is metal as well, high quality and you can see that it's inscribed on each end and around the box. This is everything that comes inside the game. You're going to be getting two player references, the rulebook for the game, two scoring stones, and seven of these pucks and or tell stones. And that's pretty much what you're going to get in the game. How to set up? Well, that's rather simple. Go ahead and choose to take the scale and place it right there in the middle and then have a player begin. To begin the game, all you're going to do is choose one of the many actions on the player references that you'll each get. Luckily, you'll see them all here, and on the back side it will show you what happens during a boast, but we'll get that in a moment. First of all, the first player is going to go ahead and choose one of the actions, and let's go ahead and talk about the actions first. The first action is you can choose to tell an opponent to place one of the Tellstones. To place a Tellstone, you'll say, please place this one on your right, in which case they'll take this and place it on the right. And you could choose to do it left or right. And it's always going to be anywhere as long as it's outside on the opposite end of one of these Tellstones. The next action is you can go ahead and tell an opponent to hide one of the Tellstones. So for instance, if I had told my opponent to place the sword there, they can tell me to hide the scale. And to hide, you simply flip it over. The next action is you can choose to tell an opponent to swap stones. You can choose to have them swap any two stones, and when they swap, they just simply are going to swap the stones. Another action that they can do is you can go ahead and peek at a stone. Peeking is just going to look at the stone and then place it back down. However, if your opponent did, choose, did score on the previous round, then you can actually peek it up to three stones. So if it looked like this and your opponent just previously scored a point, you can actually go ahead and look at three as opposed to the one. There is two other actions in the game that are used a little less often, but the most important ones to use because challenging will score you a point and boasting can have you win or lose the game. To challenge an opponent, you'll simply say, what is this stone? And if they can answer it, they'll score a point. If they cannot answer it, you'll score a point. Boasting is the more 
risky, and higher value action in the game. To boast, you'll say something like, I know all of the hidden symbols. And then they'll say, either A, I believe you, B, I don't believe you, prove it, or I don't care, I also know them. If they say, I believe you, you'll score a point. If they say, I don't believe you, prove it, you will then attempt to prove it by solving it in order. If you get any of them wrong, you lose the game. If you get them right, you win the game. If they say something like, I don't care, I know them too, you will then have the option to say, I believe you have a point, or I don't believe you and prove it. And they will have the opportunity to try and guess each of the hidden stones. The game is going to go to three points, and whoever hits either three points or is able to win a boast will win the game Tell Stones. Rather simple, pretty straightforward. Let's talk about it. This game fits in its own unique category, and it's something I would call a new classic. And by that I mean this is going to be what I feel is a classic style board game. Something like Chinese Checkers, or Chess, or Mangala, or any of those other type of games where it is simple in nature but holds quite a lot of strategy. And before we get into the strategy, I want to talk about the theme for the game. This game holds an interesting amount of theme because when I think of this game and the story that is involved in it with this little letter here, it does remind me of something somebody would give their daughter in a fantasy world involving a childhood memory for a childhood game. It's something that would fit in her pocket. She can take it onto the battlefield and she can play it with her comrades when she is in a more rested state and she can still keep it close to her as a memento. And it feels really rather special in that way. It does hit that theme extremely well. And I guess I would say surprisingly because there's not a lot of artwork involved in the game. Most of them, most of it is just symbols, but because of how the story interacts with it and because I've played League of Legends quite a bit, I get the feeling of somebody actually carrying this in their knapsack that they can use while on the battlefield during downtime to play with somebody, which is rather nice. The quality of the game, much like mechs versus minions, is high, very high. These pucks here are very thick, very nice. In fact, they're probably the size of a hockey puck, just a little smaller in diameter, but they are well, well made. And you can totally tell, you can feel them. It feels good to hold in your hand. It feels good to place. It feels good to swap them. The board itself is also included. I didn't mention that, but it is a nice little board that is going to allow you to place all the pieces on it. You don't necessarily need to have it. All you need is the stones to play the game, but this is something that's a little nicer too if you have the area to play and with this game you can play it pretty much anywhere all you need are the stones you can play it on the ground you can play it it's it's very very versatile now let's talk about the gameplay when i mean a new classic i mean this game is a kind of match two game. It reminds me of those old Mario games where you're trying to flip over the specific cards on the field and visualize, okay, this is where the mushroom is, this is where the leaf is. Okay, I just pulled the leaf, now I gotta pull the leaf over. And remembering those type of things. And this game holds a lot of value in being able to remember and memorize specific Tellstone's locations because they're going to switch, they're going to swap, they're going to flip, they're going to flop, and they're going to be peaking. Players are going to challenge other players, and of course, the boast might come when the game gets pretty well into it, especially if you're losing. And having that memory is rather important in order to win. Another thing, too, is this is a social game. It might not seem like it, but it is, because you can mess with your opponent. Start talking to them while they're moving pieces, while you ask them to do something, have a little bit of a conversation. You start getting into the game a little bit more and making your opponents kind of forget where pieces go and where pieces are, and it can definitely trip them up. It can get you to score in the game and potentially even win the game if they're super sure, but then they're not because you kind of mess with their emotions a little bit, which is rather interesting because I am terrible at memory games. And so to make it balanced on my side, I just mess with my opponent to the point where they can't remember where anything is either. And then, of course, not only does it have the memory and social aspect, but you can also risk it. You can start 
basically using deduction and uh, statistics to determine what piece is where. And if you can remember the general position of a previous piece, you might be able to figure out regardless and challenging your opponent's memory too. I'm terrible at memory games, which means I'm terrible at this game. But what I am good at is a little bit of the social game and being able to distract my opponent and then trying to challenge them before they challenge me, messing them up. That's generally the only way I've ever won this game. I generally lose quite a bit because I just can't remember where all the pieces go. But that is the strategy that you can use if you're not great with memory. Overall though, memory is rather important. And if you don't have that, you're going to have a tough time with this one. Now it is definitely not as complex as something like mechs versus minions, but it does have its own unique complexity in a game that only plays five to 10 minutes. It's something you can carry anywhere, play anywhere and set it down and let it go. Use a great gift as well. It's something that's going to work great with kids. It's going to be great for memory as far as that goes. They're going to be able to have a fun way of utilizing their brain. And in fact, with me, I have to sit there and go, sword, banner, shield, shield, sword, banner. Okay, okay, I got it. And I memorize it just like I used to memorize phone numbers back in the day, which we no longer have to do anymore. Overall, this is a lot of fun. This is going to be for a very specific audience, people who like memory games with a little bit of social aspects to them. Uh, something that's more of a light filler game where you're going to sit and play a couple times and put it up and play again at another point in time. It's not something you would base around an entire game night. People who enjoy League of Legends, and this attached theme involved of taking this out and playing it on the battlefield as well as just you League of Legends collectors. It's something I'll keep in my collection just so that I can play it with kids around so I have actually a chance to win. And an overall enjoyable game. I think for the most part though, anybody who sees this game and understands how it plays will be able to determine whether it's a game for them or not. And for those League of Legends collectors out there, it's another game that is definitely going to end up in their collection of memorabilia. Alright guys, that's all I got for you. I really appreciate you guys taking a look at the game Telstone's King's Gambit by Riot Tabletop. If you're interested in picking up the game, go ahead and check out the link below down in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. And check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have blog posts and giveaways for other games, just like this one. And we have a live stream every Wednesday on Facebook at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can win games. We give away games on the site and on the live stream, as well as our Cali's Corner giveaways and the other, other different reviews and stuff like that you can see on YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button. It greatly, greatly helps us. It gives us more motivation to keep making games, especially if you guys are new and you're coming from the League of Legends community. Go ahead and hit that button and do help me out. All right, guys, thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the battlefield, probably playing some Telstones because there's definitely no way I'm going to be doing any battling anytime soon.